Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we will be reviewing The Young Pope, episode 9. And so we open up uh, with this week's episode and we get the Pope having this intense intellectual debate with Cardinal Michael Spencer. And the debate is centered around abortion. And what we get to see in this scene is we get to understand just the high uh, uh, intellectual capacity both of these men possess in history when we think back to the clergy, the monks. These are people who had a lot of time to read, to study. So, uh, very high IQs, I'm sure both of these uh, people had um, in their discussion. And we get to see um, a lot of that in this scene as they go back intensely and quote uh, historical accounts and quote uh, a lot of, you know, cases within the Vatican. We then move over to... Uh, Gutierrez, who was sent to New York to investigate Archbishop Kurzweil, I believe his name is, on charges of uh, pedophilia. And Gutierrez, he's basically um, having a hard time. Uh, he wants to uh, bring this uh, person to trial, but he's a very powerful uh, member of that particular area of New York in that borough, and he has a lot of influence, and seemingly he has a lot of dirt on a lot of people to keep him at bay, a lot of influence, so he's not easy to take down. So what Gutierrez is doing is he's going around and he's trying to find uh, people to help him to bring this guy down. He's even uh, trying to get uh, this one uh, young athlete to try to lure uh, Kurzweil in and so that he can have the evidence against him, you know, that he is a pedophile and things of that nature. Gutierrez is, is as well having a hard time in New York. His drinking problem is still pretty much a, a, a issue he's uh not able ha, who uh, ha, he hasn't dealt with and so he just has uh, alcoholic bottles all over the room um, there's a scene where the pope calls him to check in on him uh, over like um you know via via you know um, uh, video cam and so the Pope can kind of see what's going on with Gutierrez, uh, as far as his living arrangement, what what uh, what what you know what he's doing. And so Gutierrez uh, uh, lets the Pope see the room because the Pope wants him to move the camera all around the room to see what's going on. And we just see alcohol bottles all over the place. And the Pope basically tells Gutierrez, "You've done all you can do. Just come on back home." But Gutierrez really wants to bring um, Archbishop Kurzweil um, to trial. He wants him to answer for his crimes, for his sins, and he catches a break. There is a uh, this strange uh, person wearing this um, wig. It's like a blonde wig, and he's trying to... He's basically following him all over the city, and finally Gutierrez confronts him and asks him, "Why, why, why are you following me?" The young man reveals to him that he is Kurtzwell, Kurtz, Kurtzwell's son, the Archbishop's son, and that he collaborates a lot of the stories about how bad he was treated as a kid, uh, his abuse that Kurtzwell is a you know basically a pedophile and that he's you know willing to you know go on record with that and things of that nature. And so 
this gives Gutierrez all he needs in order to have Archbishop Kurzweil brought back to the Vatican. However, before Gutierrez can even uh, give that information to Kurzweil, Kurzweil confronts him um, in this, in this, I guess it's like a diner, and he basically tells him that, hey, look, um, the Pope is jealous of me, basically, and that you all are just wasting your time because I have enough uh, evidence on the Pope to bring him down. So if he tries to bring me back to the Vatican, I'm going to basically uh, release this evidence to the press and it's going to destroy the Pope. And Archbishop Kurzweil then calls the Pope and explains to him exactly what he's going to do if he keeps pushing this issue and trying to uh, make him answer for the charges. And the Pope simply responds to him, well, everybody loves a love story. So basically the Pope tells him, do what you need to do. Uh, and uh, so Kurzweil goes into this vault where he finds uh, this information that seems to be letters of some sort. And they're love letters that the Pope wrote to his girlfriend. And Kurzweil calls this reporter, he wants the reporter to, uh, you know, uh, publish it, to, to post it. And as the reporter's going through the information, he finds out that although the Pope did say a lot of things in the letter that could be considered a scandal, he also uh, notices that the letters were never sent <laughs> you know, they were never delivered to the person they were intended for. And, you know, basically that makes it fall under because he's, he never sent the letters. Uh, it's basically considered like a work of fiction, something to, you know, something of that nature. So uh, that makes it, you know, more so they can't, it can't be considered a scandal. And this basically destroys, um, <laughs> you know, Kurzweil plans on um, trying to bring down the Pope as it's, you know, not uh, valid in that regard. But, you know, as I had been saying earlier, guys, about where I was with the show and how I felt about the show, uh, specifically pertaining to the last few episodes, that I felt it kind of uh, slowed down uh, my enthusiasm for the show uh, this week. We kind of got redemption uh, in, you know, for, for those last few episodes. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, for me anyway, it, it kind of went back to the story that intrigued me. And uh, we get this scene where Cardinal uh, Michael Spencer is dying and he calls for the Pope. And he basically wants the Pope before he dies to tell him about the miracle. Tell him, when you know, when he was a boy, this miracle that... He allegedly performed. And, you know, we know th all throughout the series, the Pope doesn't like to talk about, you know, the miracles he's performed or allegedly performed. He he ends those conversations. He doesn't like to deal with them. But as, you know, the Cardinal's on his deathbed, the Pope grants it, you know, grants his, you know, his requests. And we get to see what happened when uh the pope was a child when he was a you know he it was one of his friends uh moms was dying and you know the pope came in and he knew he had to do this thing in order to you know to help his friend's mom and so he asked everybody to leave the room and what we get to see is we see this intense prayer where he goes it's like he has this um, it's similar to what we saw in the last episode when he dealt with the sister in Africa is where he, he falls down with his arms outstretched and he really prays. I mean, he really, really prays and he goes, uh, God, we have to have a talk about my friend's mom. And it's very similar to what he did with, um, 
you know, when he prayed that the sisters, um, uh, you know, the evil that she was doing back in Africa, uh, that she had, she had to answer for that. And it's a, it's a very similar style prayer in this um, scene. And, you know, next scene we get is uh, Sister Mary and his friend Moms, um, or his, his, uh, or the, uh, or the friend comes back in the room and the the room is filled with sunlight. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Rather, everybody was uh, in the room while he was praying. And they, sunlight filled the room. And you can just see the look on their faces as they were just amazed by what they were seeing. And the mom, she's sitting up. She's smiling. And she's well... And Lenny just leaves the room and just takes off running. And my guess is he's very concerned about why it is he's able to do this thing. This It's as big a mystery, I think, to him as it is to everyone else. And I think that upsets him a lot that he doesn't understand why he has this ability. Uh, so... Cardinal Michael Spencer, he and then after Lenny tells the story, or the Pope tells the story, he then lets Cardinal Michael Spencer know that the woman is still alive to this day. And uh, Michael, uh, Cardinal Michael Spencer turns to him and says, and uh, I believe your mother is as well is still alive to this day, and you will find her. And the Pope just breaks down. It's very emotional for him um, to hear, you know, uh, Cardinal Michael Spencer say that he will, you know, have that uh, need of his met and that he will find his mom something that he's, uh, you know, been been wanting all throughout the course of the show. So I really like that scene. That was my favorite scene in the episode. And uh, it just really, I really loved um, when they visit uh, the miracles and the mystery behind, you know, behind you know, what's going on with the, uh, you know, with the, with the Pope. And so, um, the letters do get published, these love letters that the Pope, you know, met, you know, wrote, uh, but, but because he never sent the letters because, you know, it, it, it wasn't considered a scandal. And whereas the, the letters kind of being read aloud in the Pope's voice, uh, we get this cut scene to, to Esther and, uh, you know, and the baby. And uh, the, the baby has gotten bigger, you know, because it's, you know, it's been about a year, I, I think, since Esther left. And, and um, the Pope doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't visit her directly, but they're on the beach. Esther's on the beach and there's this big picture of the Pope <laughs> that he's left uh, for her and the baby to discover. And she's just... She sees the picture and she's just shocked that she's looking around trying to find the Pope and who left it and where where he's at and uh, she looks up and and, uh, and his his uh, helicopter's flying overhead <laughs> you know and and uh, you know so he doesn't make any contact with her but he just I guess lets her still know that you know he's still thinking about her and he's still uh, very much you know in the you know in the picture so. Uh, was a good episode. I like this episode. Uh, like I said, uh, this episode kind of brought my hope back a lot in the show. Um, you know, them revisiting the mysteries of him being the Pope. And, you know, one of my predictions is this is what season two is going to be about. You know, we know we're getting a season two of the young Pope, but I think that the second season is going to really deal a lot more with the mysterious side of who he is and why he can do the things he does, you know, as he further goes through his, you know, uh, uh, his, his, uh, uh, trying to, uh, uh, get followers back into the church, get the, get the pews once again filled and get everybody back in there. And Kurzweil, you know, he's been taken down. This is a victory for Gutierrez, you know, despite his, uh, dealings with alcoholism, he was able to, find the strength to pursue this, not come back in defeat, but come back um, having Archbishop Kurzweil, uh, uh, you know, to to uh, face the music, to face the charges, 
with the Pope. So, uh, strong episode. This is episode nine, so we only got one episode uh, remaining. Um, I will probably have that review ready to, uh, tomorrow. And guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Young Pope as much as I did. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. And until next time, take care.